คำนิยมฟีเจอริงวันนี้นะครับผมจะได้โอกาสคุยกับคนที่จริงๆแล้วแอบเป็นแฟนเขาอยู่เหมือนกันนะครับแต่ว่าเราไม่ได้เป็นแฟนเขาในฐานะที่หลายๆคนอาจจะรู้จักนะครับ so to me she's a TikToker and she teaches English and that's enough reason for us to like her already and she's here with us today and ladies and gentlemen this is Nida สวัสดีครับสวัสดีค่ะสวัสดีค่ะ So yeah, like I said, I know you as a TikToker and the English teacher first, mm-hmm. and then I know you as a beauty queen later. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that I, I think that's the truth uh, to a lot of of your fans. I think. Yes. Right? Yes. And mm-hmm. I, I got a lot of messages saying that I'm start watching beauty pageants because of you. Like they never watched it before. Right. But uh-huh. then they start doing so because of me, and that's that means a lot to me. I yeah. I want to bring more people into this industry. <laughs> right. That's cool. All right. So um, first of all, is. Great that you're here. Thank you so much for stopping by Comedy Podcast. Thank you. And um, I think your TikTok is going great, <laughs> and I'll always have a lot of fun and learn new stuff uh, while watching you. <laughs> and now you're about to enter yes. the biggest, the passion, the beauty passion yes. in Thailand, which is MUT. Mm-hmm. So how excited are you right now? I'm very, very excited. At the same time, I think I'm ready because you always have to be ready in this in this industry, and that's right. why I like about that's what I like about pageantry. Yeah. And thank you so much for having me too because I'm oh. like your biggest fan. I always oh, really? watch comedy wow. all the time. It's our pleasure, <laughs> our pleasure. Actually, we're practically in the same business. Yes. Like we're teaching, uh, or we we're trying to get people to use English yes. more. Yes. Right. And and you do it in such a fun and very. Entertaining, educational way, and that's what we love about you. Yeah, thank you. And I, I think learning a language should be fun. Like you shouldn't just be in the classroom and learn about grammar mm-hmm. and you know reading comprehension. Right. I think like for me, I start learning English because like Taylor Swift, Harry Potter, Justin Bieber, One Direction, you name it all. Like I <laughs> love all of. Yeah, I love all, all of the those. pop cultures yes. and yeah. So it keep me, you know, improving. Mm-hmm. But if I, I just learn it to take a test, that'll be it. After I'm done. Yeah. Taking the test. Mm-hmm. Even though you can, you can do it well, but <laughs> maybe that's just it. That's just it. You don't yeah. want to do it more. Yes. But if you enjoy uh, whatever that uh, you're enjoying in life, and you could incorporate English uh, to be the part of whatever you love, mm-hmm. of course you'll keep using it, right? Yes. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so tell us about uh, the MUT. But a- actually, uh, this is not. Your even second passion, right? Because yes. people know you from being a first runner-up, mm-hmm. the first runner-up from Miss, Miss Thailand, Thailand. Yes. Nang Sao Thai, right? Yes. And <laughs> I'm, I'm embarrassed because I used to think that they're the same thing, like ah, Miss Thailand and Miss, Miss Universe, Universe Thailand. I, I, I think it. I, I thought it was the same thing. It's just like the it, newer version of the same passion, but it, it's not obviously. It was the same at one point. So whoever competed in Nang Sao Thai back in the day, if you win Nang Sao Thai, you go and compete in Miss Universe. Okay. But now we have both in Thailand. We have both Nang Sao Thai and Miss Universe Thailand. Mm-hmm. And now that we have two um, pageantries that right. represent two different um, visions. I see. Yeah. Uh-huh. So this is not your only two pageants. You've been to more pageants before. Yes, right. Ha, so ha. how many and what were they? Ah, uh, Nang Sao, Nakhon Si Thamarat. Of that was course, that, your hometown, my right? My hometown. That's, that was my first mm-hmm. pageant experience. It was, oh wow. I I I, I don't know how to even, even describe it because I started from zero. And I didn't wear heels. I didn't know how to put on makeup. Wow! I didn't know anything about the the industry. Uh. But I think I went in just like you know what, just have fun. And who, who got you into that, or you got yourself into the pageant? I accidentally got myself into <laughs> jokingly <How> so? <laughs> because I started a, a program after I moved back to to the U.S. I started a program called Junior Guide mm-hmm. where I teach. Uh, and encourage Nakhon Si Thamarat students to talk more and learn more about their city mm. and our city, to be honest. And then 
Uh, after that, because I prepare all the materials by myself, I was just telling my family because I know all the history, I know the location, I know the food, I know the culture. And you know what? Technically, I'm Miss n a k o n s i p a r a Right, right. That's You're how right. I started. That's uh-huh. how I started, and. Uh, And you entered the passion, the Miss n a k o n s i t h a m a r a t as your first passion, right? Yes, because mm-hmm. my my dad was kind of like, you know, why why not? You know, they mm-hmm. they're open now. The application is open. Uh-huh. Just just apply. And I apply. Yeah. I think I believe the last day because I was thinking about it. I was like, right. hmm. Uh-huh. So you weren't sure. <laughs> I wasn't sure at uh-huh. all. And then, you didn't see yourself as the beauty queen. No, even now the word beauty queen kind of like. Wow, I, I don't know if I could really <laughs> say that mm-hmm. beauty queen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And how was the experience? Your first it pageant? Was, it was really fun. I love. There is this thing called kept t u a h like camping. Ah. Ah. So different pageants would have different kept t u a h different camping. So Cup. at Miss n a k o n s i t h a m a r a t they would take you to a lot of local places, mm. local like restaurants for you to talk to. You know, like all the local. And talk to the locals and eat local foods. And for mm-hmm. someone who never really, like, experienced that as mm-hmm. I was growing up, because I moved to the U.S. when I was 15, it right. was like fascinating to see all of that mm-hmm. and to see n a k o n s i t h a m a r a t as the age of 22 through like the vision that I have at that time. Mm-hmm. And I was like, this is super cool. I want to take all of my friends back here because we went. To Pa Chai l i n we went to like eat a lot of food, and I was yeah. like, "Wow, I love this." Mm-hmm. That's a kind of experience that you don't get to have mm-hmm. every day, right? Yes, mm-hmm. yes. But actually, you can have it every day. You just it's, think that it's a maybe it's a touristy thing to do, or yeah. So we kind of take it for granted, just right. because we are the locals and we don't really exactly. Like, it's the temple. We always go there. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, It's this restaurant. We always mm-hmm. go there. But when you go there as the beauty queen, it's mm-hmm. something. It's different. Like they get super excited uh-huh. just like to see you, uh-huh. and you are there with all the girls. And I love being around like women. I feel so empowering uh-huh. when I'm around them. So like, it's, right. it's super fun. So I can imagine that you you said you started learning about your hometown mm-hmm. uh, just right before this passion. So. Right before that, when you were living in the U.S., I can imagine if someone should ask you about your hometown, what would you say? What would you tell them? I would say, oh, "I'm from n a k o n s i Tamara, Thailand." Mm. They'll be like, "What?" <laughs> and I'm like, oh, "It's a southern province." Oh, Phuket, right? Phuket. And yeah, I'm like, oh, right? a people little would bit go downer than that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I'm mm-hmm. like, yeah, Phuket is great. Phuket mm-hmm. is great, but that's people would only know Bangkok, Phuket, Chiang Mai. Exactly right. That's mm-hmm. all, and I mean it's not their fault. I don't think it's their fault. We yeah. just we haven't really promote heavily on like mm-hmm. all of the mm-hmm. provinces. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Okay. So so let's talk about uh, your life in the U.S. for mm-hmm. for a second, because you were living there, I think, uh, for like eight years, right? Yes. Yes. It's pretty long time. Right? Very. <laughs> and and you moved there when you were um, what age? At what age? I moved there when I was turning 16. Okay. So 15, 16. So like right around the high school yes. age, right? Yes. Grade 10 is when Grade I, 10. I started. Okay. Yeah. And did you still remember, like the the experience or how you felt when you first moved there? Yes, like because I always love practicing and speaking English, even though I oh. I couldn't really speak. As fluent back then, but I think like, it's always like so much fun for me to be able to communicate with people mm-hmm. from like my American friends or mm-hmm. my Vietnamese American friends, mm-hmm. or some of my friends are from like Mexico. Some of them are from Korea, mm-hmm. and we are using English to communicate. Mm-hmm. And I think that was like the coolest thing. And I yeah. love learning about their culture. Mm-hmm. I I pretty much grew up in a very like. Diverse community because mm-hmm. I grew up in California and my my oh. high school was like heavily on like it's it's very very diverse. Right. Yeah. That that must have been a cool one of the coolest experiences yes, that, that yes. you had in your life. Right? Yes, and I, I I remember my friend told me that I didn't stop talking <laughs> because I couldn't. I was so happy. And I was just yeah. asking them all the time, "What does it mean? What is it?" Yeah. <laughs> so you, you it didn't sound like you had any. Um, struggling, like adjusting to your mm. new life, you just fit right in. You just have fun, and <laughs> I just, I think I, I, I struggled quite a bit, mm-hmm. but I'm very good at pretending. Like I really like myself in you a mean, challenging. With, what, with the language or with the with um... everything? I really okay. like 
like challenging myself. Uh-huh. So when it's a little bit hard, I'm just like, you know what? This is good. But deep uh, down, I'm a little bit like, oh mm-hmm. my god, I'm not sure if I can do this. <laughs> mm-hmm. But on the surface, yes. Ah, okay. Yes. I, I very, I'm very good with that. Now <laughs> I got into pageantry and how and I got this far. Pretending everything is fine and yes. you're doing great. Yes. But 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 actually, I think that's a great approach because if we um, tend to be like, oh man, I don't yeah. think I can do it, and then that way you you're convincing yourself <laughs> that you can, that right? That you can. Yes. Uh-huh. I, I actually changed my host family three times. Really? What happened? Three times. I think the first time, she was really nice to me, but I think the whole time I couldn't really hang out with my friends. You know, as a high schooler, I always wanted to go to the mall, and most of the time she would always tell me that if, if you go to the mall, you will get kidnapped, and she would tell me oh, all these oh, news okay. about. Ah, like, oh, so she's too worried about you. Yes, like, yes. Oh. And I was really scared. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah, I was really scared, and mm-hmm. at that time I also had the opportunity to stay with my friend. So ah. because her host family was like opening for more students. Ah, I see. And I was like, you know what? I'll just move. Oh. And I I moved there, and then I think I stayed there for a year, and after that I moved to uh, another host family who is pretty much like my second parent <laughs> mm-hmm. at this time because uh, I I pretty much lived there like for the whole two years. Mm-hmm. And they've been very nice to me, and she's she she's also a teacher at my school, so it was really easy. Ah, okay. Yeah. So um, at first, when you start um, moving there, mm-hmm. were you thinking I-, I could stay here forever, or you knew at some point in the future you're moving back to Thailand? Did you I, know back I, then? I I knew that I wanted to stay in the U.S., but I never knew for how long. Okay. But I knew that I wanted to stay there really badly. Like I mm-hmm. wanted to stay here. I mm-hmm. have to make a life here. Right. And eventually, when I grow older, uh, when I hit like 21, 22, and when I started working, I it become my comfort zone. Like uh, I have a car, I have everything, I have friends, and mm. but one thing that I never really had back then was the knowledge of who I truly was, because I know I always tell people that I'm I'm a woman from Thailand, I'm from Thailand, but I can never actually say that uh-huh. like. You know, mm-hmm. with all the knowledge that I know about Thailand, mm-hmm. I didn't know much. So, did you feel like you kind of lose connection with yes. your root? Yes. Probably. Okay. Yes, and oh, uh, when I talked to my family, it was it was like I'm talking to them, but I I don't really like we don't speak the same language, mm-hmm. even though we are speaking Thai. And I was like, right. No, but no. you were there by yourself, and your family stayed yes. behind in yes. Thailand, right? In Thailand. Okay. So. Mm. It it's, it was like really different, and mm-hmm. I think a very different uh, experience that mm-hmm. anyone could right. go through. You so know? you finished high school and you went to college or university and you finished your bachelor's, yes. right? Yes. And at, at what point did you started thinking maybe I want to move back to Thailand? When I started working. Oh, okay. When I when I started working and yeah. I I graduated with a marketing degree. And I uh, I started a job. My first job was about like an e-commerce specialist. Oh, at, it sounds great. Yes, yes, it's really <laughs> fun actually. Yeah. And uh, when I worked, like I, it's never feel like it's rewarding. It's never feel like I'm doing something back to the community. And I have always volunteered throughout my life when I was in the U.S. And I was mm-hmm. like, the the feeling is is not the same. But I always mm-hmm. tell myself, oh, it's a job. You know, this is what I make money, mm-hmm. and then I can enjoy mm-hmm. other hobby. Mm-hmm. And then around that time, I think my mom came and stayed with me for a bit. And we would just kind of like talk. What do you want to do? Mm-hmm. And she told me about this junior guy program. That she was like, you know, this is a really good experience. If you you plan to go back, maybe go back for a bit and try out if you like this. And it s o u n d very like promising to me because right. I love English. I love encouraging people to speak English. Mm-hmm. And that's when I kind of like, hmm, maybe just just maybe. Oh, so you already had it in you back then. I mean, the teacher spirit. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. And so, uh, you you were working for how many years, or for, for how long? For a year. For a, for a year. year. And yeah. then you decided to come back to Thailand. Come back, and then uh-huh. and then I, I remember my mom told me that I didn't even I didn't even remember this happening, but my mom told me about it, so I was like, oh yeah, it's actually happened. 
So the first time that I did an interview with uh, U.S. Embassy, they mm-hmm. asked me like, "Why do you want to go to study and why do you want to stay in the U.S.?" Right. I was like, "At 15 years old, I didn't know what to answer, but right. I learned the word from my class, the word developed." Uh-huh. And I was like, mm, I I want to come back and develop my country. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is very ambitious yes. uh, answer, and it, at, it sounds great, right? At 15. You want, yeah. Yeah, at 15, you want to like improve mm, yeah. or develop your country. Yeah. So, and do you still do you still remember um, you, a uh, 15 year old, and mm-hmm. saying that word? And how about now? When thinking back, I was like, wow, that's that that is something that. Not a lot of 15 years old could think of. I think right. that was uh, mm-hmm. that was really big, and I think it was mm-hmm. a great vision that mm-hmm. I have for for me. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. So when you decided to move back, did you know then what you were going to be doing in Thailand? No, not not at all. Just mm-hmm. only this junior guy program right. that I wanted to, mm-hmm. you know, teach mm-hmm. English, and I mm-hmm. want kids to be able to speak English freely. Mm-hmm. In mm-hmm. my in my city, mm-hmm. we don't really have that space. Yeah. I want to have this safe space, and right. I let's see how it takes me. Right. And it was it I was think. it sounds great, and it sounds very interesting. So, can you tell us a little bit about how you started in the first place? Like, what did you do exactly when you moved back, and uh, how did you get it going? So we talked about this idea when we were in the U.S. and then we, when we moved back, she was like, "Okay, you know, let's pick the date. It will be like two months long. It's gonna be completely free, mm-hmm. and we can use like our like, Facebook to promote it. And then we have like, uh, like a group on Facebook for n a k o n s i t a m a r a t people. Oh. So we can just drop it on there, mm-hmm. and because it's gonna be, and I have to decide like how many months." Like in each lessons, what are we gonna learn about? Mm-hmm. So we divided into like eight lessons, and uh, according to k a m p a n n a k o n s i t a m a l a t เมืองพระอะไรอย่างเงี้ยค่ะประวัติศาสตร์พวกนี้ทุกอย่างเลย everything. So you practically designed your own curriculum and yes. the whole course. The whole course. <coughs> wow. Yes. Okay. เมืองประวัติศาสตร์พระธาตุทองคำชื่นชมธรรมชาติพระธาตุอุดมเครื่องชมสามกษัตริย์มากวันวัคซินครบสิ้นกุ้งปู all of that in in eight weeks and you turned it into like the junior guide program yes to encourage people to use more English and to know more about, about their, their hometown yes and wow. and I make it fun. Like we play games all the time. We yeah. Charades. Uh-huh. We, <laughs> I, I was like, okay, you know, go up and talk to your friends and like right. try to make like try to make it fun and try to make sure that it's encouraged. Yeah, it's uh-huh. encouraging for for students to. Okay. Like, so speak so up. were they all students or like yes. how, how young were they? Like they average. They were. p o r t i e ha. p o r t i e t n g มสเด็กมากเหมือนกันนะครับ Yes Yes uh-huh. and they get along really well surprisingly Yeah, uh-huh. yeah, yeah. So you love working with children obviously I love I love oh. working with ความหนางงามเริ่มมาแล้วนะหนางงามต้องรักเด็กใช่ไหมนางงามรักอะไรก็ได้รักอะไรก็ได้ That's a good answer Yeah really ใช่อาจจะมีคนถามว่าเออทำไมบอกว่านางงามต้องรักเด็กด้วย What would What would your answer be for that I think n a n g a beauty queen can love anything that mm-hmm. they love. You can love about the environment, and you can advocate about that as well. Or right. you know, you can love about books, and you can talk more about books. Mm-hmm. But I just happen to love working with children. <laughs> right, that's so. so cool. Yeah. After you're done with the junior guide program, the first idea, the first thought about entering your first passion. When when did it come? Uh, when did it happen? It happened after I finished all the programs, and I was like. Mom, you know, <laughs> I know about the history. I know mm-hmm. the food. I know the culture. I think I miss Nakonsi Tamarat mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. So let's just, do it. Just that. I didn't even say let's do it. I said, and after like that months later, I think my dad told me that the application for Miss Nakonsi Tamarat mm-hmm. is opened. Right. And I was like, okay, why are you telling me <laughs> at first? <laughs> also, he he has got some idea that you you could do this. I I I am not sure. I never actually thought. Yeah. I, I never actually asked them about that. Maybe I will t- uh-huh. today. All right. Yeah. Maybe mm. he 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 saw something within mm. me, mm. and he always encouraged. My parents always encouraged me to do something new and like be outside the box. They're so cool. Yes. Yes. They're the coolest. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you decided to enter the passion, and then 
that was not your last, obviously. No. And then there's another one, and then there's another one. Yes. Cut to uh, the big pageant, which is Miss, Miss Thailand. Thailand, and you got the first runner-up. Yes. Tell us about that competition. I think I went in with the mentality of like, I just want to have fun. You um, know, I met a lot of pageant girls uh, throughout like the year that I, I was in. They call it "nangam don sai," "ha nangam don sai." Like they go everywhere. To, yeah. You know. So this is their profession, like yes. their professional beauty queens, yeah, right? Yeah, they're to me they are very admiring because a lot of them actually pay for their tuition. Oh. They like give their mm-hmm. money to their parents, and yeah. I think this is like something that. Very, very like empowering as a woman. Yeah, this is like their passion. Passion, yeah. Yeah, they're born to do this. Yes, and, and then, is, is that you? Like, do you think you you are one of them? Like, I, very I, passionate I'm, about. I'm passionate, yes, mm-hmm. but uh, I wasn't as passionate about pageantry as as they are mm-hmm. at at the beginning. Right. Because I was, it was very new to me, and I didn't think it's something that I would do. Mm-hmm. And then I kind of grew in. I kind of grew. It kind of grew on me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. I kind of like. Oh yeah. You know what? It's actually fun meeting uh-huh. all these people. Mm-hmm. And that's every Nangam Don Sai. Every woman that I met, they always like. Oh, I want. They want to go to Nang Sap Thai. Mm-hmm. They mm-hmm. want to go to Nang Sap Thai. So I'm like, you know what? Maybe I should try that out. Yeah. So and when you first enter, when you made a decision to join, mm-hmm. did you aim for the crown? Yes. You of course, right? Aim for the crown. Yeah. <laughs> uh huh. Yes. And and uh, how big of a chance do you think you had back then for Miss Thailand? I, to be honest with you, no one but my family <laughs> believed in me. <laughs> really? <laughs> and at, at that time. Yes. Yes. น่าจะมีคู่แข่งที่แบบเก่งเก่งเยอะใช่ไหมครับมาค่ะแล้วก็ทุกคนแบบ experienced. They are very experienced. They have been in this industry for a very long time. Right. And they are very famous mm-hmm. in the industry as well. And mm-hmm. I was super excited, like to finally meet them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It's like, mm-hmm. oh my gosh, I'm their fans. I'm like, I'm your fan. <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah. So, so, were you considered like the dark horse for that competition? That's what people said. Yeah. Yes. Uh-huh. So, uh, I, I, I guess like there was nothing about me. Like the whole time, there was mm-hmm. no Nita. Like I was number 19, right? But no one really know. No one was really like. Paying attention to me, yeah, but I was yeah. just doing my best in every day. Right. I'm just having fun, and I mm-hmm. tell my family what I did in a mm-hmm. day, and then we go. To, I go to sleep, and the next day, like I just have fun with the girls. Mm-hmm. And when I made it to top five, I was yeah. like, you know what? This is it. Uh huh. Like, this is beyond my dream. Even mm-hmm. though we were aiming for the crown, right? But right. It's, it was some from someone that like never actually competed in a big pageant before. This mm-hmm. is what this was like. Wow, a, a wow moment. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then when they announced that I I was into top two, top m u a I was just kai dai kai dai ha. Anyone at this point. Mm-hmm, you know? mm-hmm. So why didn't you win the crown? I think winning the crown uh, takes a lot more than just you know, be- being a beauty queen. Mm-hmm. You have to know your yourself. You have to be very sure of yourself. And on top of that, you have to be very experienced on stage. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what I lack. At, okay. At, at, at that time, I see. I was just walking and on heels, like I just, I was just having fun. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that there's techniques, you know, when mm-hmm. you turn. I didn't mm-hmm. know any of that. Mm-hmm. I just, you know what? I'm just gonna turn when I want to. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but I, I guess you have been working more on that now, yes, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. And and also the person that won, P P May, she deserved it. I think she mm-hmm. did. Her best. Mm, that. It's just her year. Yeah, it's her year. Too. Yeah, so um, well, let's let's talk about the um, the competition itself, the pageant, because it used the beauty queen, right? Mm-hmm. It says in the name already, you have to be beautiful. It used to be just beauty, and then beauty and talents, mm-hmm. right? Don't be r o s t e n o m s a m a n said, and then beauty, talents, and the ability to answer the question and wow the crowd, mm-hmm. right? But it's even more now nowadays, right? Yes. Yeah. So, what what is the requirement, or what does it take for a person to be a beauty queen these days? How uh-huh. how how hard? How complicated is it? 
I think it's very complicated. Mm. Like you said, you need to have the beauty. You need to wow the crown. You need to have talents. All of this thing. Mm. And now, because of social media, I feel like beauty queens need to be, in a way, influencers. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. So they need to know how to. They. We need to know how to <laughs> sing. So we need to know. <laughs> You're how a part of them, weren't yeah, you? Yes, yes. Yeah. I was like, they. Okay. <laughs> so we need to know um, how to use our social media. In the right way, and at mm. the same time promoting what we believe in. Yeah. Our advocacy and also you know all the products that mm. we are endorsing. Have advocacy, to be, yeah. yeah. You you need to believe in something strongly. Yes. To be like a beauty queen, that's yes nowadays. Yes. Now is it? And yeah. also, I think you need to have a team because mm. it's really it's it's not a one man show. You know, you need it's a team effort. Yeah, it's a team effort. Uh-huh. Let's talk about your team then. Who do you have on your team and my my family? Yeah, uh-huh. I have my mom. Uh-huh. Uh, how <laughs> do they help you, or how do they contribute to to your like um, uh, being in the pageant? Everything, everything. Kam lang chai, kam lang sap. No t a k n u d i b a I I I collect certain amount of money. I save certain amount of money, but it's really a lot of money when you compete. You know? Yeah. So mm-hmm. every everything, and they help find like stylist. Mm-hmm. And uh, makeup artist, mm-hmm. everything. Mm-hmm. And you mentioned before that right after this interview, after yes. this talk, you will have to go and like treatments. Yeah, uh, beautify yourself yeah. basically. <laughs> and and you mentioned that this is the thing that you never did before, mm. and you just started doing this for the passion, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. It- so uh, did you? Have to change yourself a lot in order to. I mean, in the good way, of mm-hmm. course. In order to um, be in the pageant. Yes, mm-hmm. I think I have to change myself in a good way to be in this industry, and that's just why I like pageantry a lot because I never thought that I could be enough or be um, be anything for this. It mm-hmm. seemed so far for me when I was younger. Mm-hmm. Like it seems like oh, being in. On the stage, or being in the movies, or mm. being a model—that's not at all like what I would. You know, I, I could have not done that, mm-hmm. or I could not like go to a beauty salon just to like get a haircut because I didn't feel like I was enough. I wasn't pretty enough to do that. I don't know why I have that thought. I didn't, uh-huh. you know. But because of beauty pageants, it uh, it makes me appreciate my life a little bit more. That mm. you know, it's my view. <laughs> Treat yourself a little bit better, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> validate yourself more, mm-hmm. and be more outspoken. Right, and there's this one thing that I think is very unique and interesting. I'm not sure if uh, this is done like any other place else in the world, but the keyword mm. uh, competition, the keyword segment of this, um, the whole event, it kind, it kind of. Proves what I just said that you need to be even like better and better in every which way in order to be a beauty queen these days. You have to know how to talk and you have to know how to like think on spot and mm-hmm. convince people and make a great impression yes. with your speech. So that's why they have this like keyword, keyword. thing. Yeah. And uh, how prepared are you for the keyword thing? I think the keyword thing is very much like. A symbol of Miss Universe Thailand, like mm. it's just there, like it's just our thing. Oh, yeah, wow. it's just it's our thing. Right. And um, I, how prepared am I? Mm-hmm. Very, very prepared because every day I try to practice mm-hmm. having like different keywords all the time. And, right. Uh, for 30 seconds, I try to talk about it. Mm-hmm. And when sometimes when you kind of like stuck, I just have to force myself to keep going because that could happen in in like. In real life, and I need to find a way to end this. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I think it's like I said all the time: confidence and everything mm-hmm. is earned through practice. Right, right. Mm-hmm. So, but and now that you're here, <gasps> let us help you a little bit <gasps> with the practice. So we kind of have this uh, fun keyword. I think it's um, both like nangam nangam keyword nangam, and also nangam. the creative mm-hmm. kind of words. So mm-hmm. maybe we just. Have, Have fun. fun. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. do you want to draw? Yes, uh, yes. From here. Yeah. Well, I'm excited. Okay. So, what do you get? Oh, social media. Social media. Wow. It's like, I, I I'm sure that you have talked about that before, right? Because it's everywhere <laughs> and it's yes. Yeah. 
So okay, yeah, so 30, 30 seconds. Social media start. Social media is actually a great tool if you want to learn something and want to connect with people. However, sometimes if you being if you're putting yourself too much on social media and not finding a break for yourself, that could be that could be negative for your mental health. So make sure that when you're on social media, try to practice it mindfully. And make sure that you don't compare yourself to the people that you see online. m o n ครับมงมงอยู่ที่ไหนขอบคุณค่ะ Let let's do another one. Let's do another one. That that would be too easy and obvious, I think. Right? Okay. One more. One more. One more. Mm-hmm. Plastic surgery. Oh, Ooh, wow. I love this. Yeah. Okay. I think plastic surgery shows medical advancement. And if you want to find confidence through plastic surgery, you could only for two months, and after you're used to what you look like, I don't, I don't think plastic surgery is a way to look for confidence. If you want to look for confidence, you have to be happy with and without plastic surgery. Mm. Wow! Another m o n g have another m o n g Was that good? <laughs> yeah, I really like that. Yeah. So, um, that that's I I could really see that's that that the real keyword that you might uh, get from from this keyword round. But let let's try let's try uh, something else. So we we kind of want you to uh, be creative with uh, your answer <laughs> and maybe okay. I don't even know what's in here. Really? Yeah. Okay. I'm shaking. What did you get? Bubble tea. <laughs> ah, okay. 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 So let's talk okay. about bubble tea. Bubble tea is, I believe, they call bubble tea in New York, but in California we call them boba. So I will always teach my student it's boba, not bubble tea. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Are you a big fan of bubble tea or boba? Used to, yes. Yeah. But I, mm-hmm. after I move. Back to Thailand, I I feel like boba here are super super sweet, mm-hmm. and I cannot really taste the tea. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. So yeah, I, uh-huh. I stopped, and yeah. I know how bad sugar is. Yeah, and I'm not like technically that young, when I was like you know, so I have to be more mm-hmm. self conscious. <laughs> yeah, please let's do another, another one. one. Another one. We are having fun here. Yeah. Let's see. Ooh, stubborn. Oh, you just mentioned that you're a stubborn person. Yes. Uh huh. So, perfect. You you <laughs> should be able to talk about stubbornness. I think you can use stubbornness into your most advantage. Mm. It doesn't always have to be a bad thing, but because I mentioned that I'm stubborn, because I don't I like to prove people wrong, and I don't like it when people tell me that I couldn't do something. So sometimes it's fine if you're stubborn. Mm. Wow. Perfect. I really like your answer. Really? Yeah, Thank you. Yeah, because I, I, I like to think that I am also stubborn, but I don't, I don't think that's a negative quality at all. No. 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 Right. But I mean, if it's too extreme, mm. you know, everything is good, but in moderation. <laughs> wow, that's another good <laughs> idea for almost like everything Every- in the world. <laughs> yes. Everything in moderation. But you need to be a little bit. You know, people need to be a little bit more stubborn mm-hmm. if if they have a chance to, and it doesn't hurt other people. Mm-hmm. You have yeah. to. <laughs> uh-huh. Obviously, you've been practicing, and you're very good at like giving speech and talking. Talking in general, I'm having fun talking to you, you. and you can um, make some great ideas, very valid, and I th- I'm sure you can convince people. Can can you share like your Talking or your speaking techniques, because I'm sure a lot of our audience want to improve their like speaking. Do you have any uh, tips? Yes, uh, I think if you want to be able to speak better, you have to listen more. Mm. Number one, you have to listen more because you need all of that information within you before you can speak or mm. you can talk about something. Mm. Either listening or reading, do that. And second. Uh, you need to be able to allow yourself to make mistakes, because I I don't believe that you could be good at something by not practicing or making any mistakes at all. I make mistakes all the times, and I'm sure I make a lot of mistakes in these tapes as well. And it's fine, you know. It it I think at the end of the day is about g e t t i n g the uh, 
conversation, getting the message across. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And last one, be brave. Be very brave, because I think in our community in Thailand, it's kind of hard to practice English when you don't have um, foreigner friends, and it's kind of weird if you speak. Thai. Yeah, all of a sudden to yeah. random no, people, no, right? Or, or like you speak English with Thai people. I think we still have that stigma that right. like you shouldn't really, mm-hmm. you know, speak mm-hmm. English with Thai people, which I totally disagree. You mm-hmm. know, so be brave and start mm-hmm. talking to your friends in English. I mean, mm-hmm. if you want to practice English, why yeah. not? You know. Yeah, <laughs> just just have fun, right? Yeah, have fun and be brave. That's great advice. And uh, so, actually, I I one thing that I uh. Always think about uh, since I know your channel on mm-hmm. TikTok and I know who you are, is that this is great because we have like a beauty queen as an English teacher, like in combination, <laughs> and and that's such a good combo. So you can get people to uh, be interested in both like industry, like mm-hmm. teaching, uh, you know, studying language and like beauty passion at the same time. So um, let's talk a little bit more about uh, the way you you teach English mm-hmm. or the way you like do the activities like your uh, junior guide camp to encourage people to to use more English. Do you have any um, teaching technique or like um, something that you believe in in like teaching English or uh, using English? I think you need to know your student really well. You cannot just teach. Present simple tense about like everyday life all the time. You know, you can't you can't just do that. You need to know. For example, I know that my student, this student likes BTS. I'll be like, <sighs> Ah, Jungkook, t a m a l a i n e Can you write like Jungkook daily life for me? Mm-hmm. Can you write about uh, mm-hmm. Jin's life for me? Mm-hmm. Or imagine that you are you know their manager. What would you do in a day? Mm-hmm. Wow. Things like that. Or uh-huh. if they like Taylor Swift. Uh, like yourself, like, like me. <laughs> Then you know, write a conversation or learn something. Let's say if I if I meet Taylor Swift, like what would you say to Taylor uh, Swift? Things like this, right. and it it shouldn't be just uh, subject, book, verb, book, like like that. No. Mm-hmm. So you need to know your student really well. You need to keep them uh, engaging mm-hmm. with the subject. Right. So make it relevant to them. Yes. Mm-hmm. Like you know, this is why you need English mm-hmm. because one day maybe if you run into Jungkook, mm-hmm. what would you say to them? Yes, <laughs> if, exactly. if you don't know Korean, you have to say something to him. Yes, and yeah. and you can see like that their their eyes just brighten up when yeah. I mention what mm-hmm. they like. You know, they just mm-hmm. like. <gasps> ไม่ตื่นเต้นไม่เคยเรียนภาษาอังกฤษแบบนี้สนุกนะแล้วเราก็พบว่านี่แหละ you don't even have to try to get them to do the assignment because this is something that they really enjoy doing right uh huh wow that's cool yeah I tried would you consider being a teacher like a full on teacher one day in the future I never really thought about that but I always tell people around me that I think teaching is always, always gonna be within me, no matter what I do in life. Mm-hmm. I think teaching is my passion. I love sharing. Mm-hmm. I love getting to know people. Mm-hmm. I love learning from my students. Mm-hmm. So teaching is always gonna be a part of me. Yeah, and I think the definition of teacher nowadays is not necessarily that you have to be in the system. Like you need to teach at school mm-hmm. to become a teacher. You no, can become yeah. a teacher. By teaching on TikTok, like yeah. you've been doing for like two years now, right? Yes. Yeah. Two years. Yeah. Two years. Yeah. Uh huh. So tell tell us about how you started on TikTok. I started. It's a really funny story. I actually I started because h u p u m I saw h u p u m video. Oh, and I okay. She was her. on our show. I watched that, and yeah. I actually messaged her because we are friends on TikTok. Oh, cool. I know, and then I was like, I just watched your community with you. You are amazing. I love, blah blah blah. And then, mm-hmm. uh, I, I I really loved her. I looked up to her a lot. Right. And uh, I started because I saw her videos mm-hmm. on on Twitter. And I was like, this uh. is really cool. Like, I never actually thought that TikTok could be a Uh, educational or learning platform, and the way that she turned English into something very interesting, and it's very short within like an a minute, within mm-hmm. a minute. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know what? Maybe, 
maybe I could do something like that. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> I was just thinking, what what do Thai people miss? Like when learning English, and I think it's mostly everyday English. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I was like, okay, let's look around. What do I have around me? Mm-hmm. And I've created my first TikTok because of one Kit Kat. I have a Kit Kat, and I was like, if you really like to mm-hmm. say that you like eating mm-hmm. sweet stuff like desserts, you can say I have a sweet tooth. Mm-hmm. And That was my first video. Yeah. I have a sweet tooth. <laughs> That's it, and it went viral. It got like eight thousand views mm-hmm. in one night. Yeah, I was like, uh-huh. oh, people actually like this kind of stuff. So Simple I, yeah. and practical. Yes. Yeah. Wow. And you did a great job. You, you're <laughs> doing you. great jobs because, um, well. To to us, because we we are the the standard. We have podcasts. Mm-hmm. We have like video platform. We have the website, and uh, we have the Instagram. But TikTok is still new to us. So mm-hmm. you've done this for like two years already. Do you have any tips and tricks for us? So maybe k a m d i d i could could do something on TikTok more. I think uh, it have to be very catchy mm. because. Uh, it's very fast paced on TikTok. It's good, but at the same time, it's actually not really good for your like focus. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, attention span, attention span, stuff. Yeah. stuff like that. Mm. But let's focus on the good side. I think right. you need to be very quick and catchy. It's like, for example, the first sentence have to be within like three seconds or five seconds. สามคำที่เราควรพูดในเวลาเราสามคำที่เราควรพูดตอนสมัครงาน things like that. Yeah. ไม่ไม่ต้องเอิงเอยอ้อมค้อมเกลื่อนเยื่อเยอะสวัสดีค่ะบอกเลยว่า this is what you'll get from watching this video yes oh, okay one thing that I like about TikTok is that uh, people will watch you because of your content mm-hmm. like I don't have to tell people สวัสดีค่ะนิต้านะคะวันนี้จะมา no mm-hmm. I just I just there I'm just on TikTok to give And okay. that's what I love so much about yeah. it. I don't. You don't need to know what my name is. Mm-hmm. You don't need to know why I'm here for. But yeah. you can learn something from from my page. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, yeah. you have mentioned short, and I remember talking to Krupum. She also mentioned that short used to be her problem with like ah. doing content because she used to teach for like three hours at the ah. university, right? So talking long is not a problem for, for her, her, but talking short. That's very challenging. Do you yes. have the same challenge, or I, uh, because I I think talking long would be would be more of a challenge to me. Okay, so yeah, the opposite, the opposite for you. Yeah. Okay, and keep it short, keep it interesting, mm-hmm. like uh, anything about you know anything that's up to date. Mm-hmm. Let's say if there is a news in the U.S. that's like big, talk about that, or in Thailand, talk mm-hmm. about that. Right. People, People mm. want something that's up to date. Mm. You've mentioned in your like bio on the TikTok that you're a lifelong learner. Mm. So wow. this is what you believe in, right? Yes, uh, truly. Because I, I used to be someone with with a fixed mindset. Mm. I I thought that this is who I am. Like I said, I'm stubborn. This is who I am. This is how I'm gonna do it. Mm. And if I cannot. Do this. This means I'm, I must be very bad at something. This mm. must be very wrong. Mm. I use bad and wrong a lot when I was younger. I see. And and then I think being in pageantry actually got me out of that loop, and that's why I want to put it somewhere like on TikTok, on Instagram that I see it often. Mm-hmm. That it's okay if I make mistakes. It's okay mm-hmm. if I didn't do something well as I intended it to be. Mm-hmm. I'm still a lifelong learner. Yeah, learn that's a part of time. learning. Yes. After all, okay. One of your um, actually, you've got a lot of videos. That went viral, but one video in particular, ประสบการณ์เพื่อนทั้งห้องมองแรง I'm sure you remember that one, yes, right? Yes. Is your most viral, like two million, million something, right? Yeah. Tell us about that, um, the making of that video. Honestly, I have no plan when I <laughs> when it comes to making TikToks. I just yeah? kind of let my creativity takes me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in that video, I was actually in my dad's office, and I was like, hmm. There must be something that I could talk about, something that it's it's interesting. Mm. And I remember this situation where 
uh, about my stats class back in mm. college, mm-hmm. and you can uh, tell that story again in, in case a lot of people oh, haven't watched yeah, yeah. this. Okay, yeah, and then and it was in my uh, st- statistic class back in the first year of college, and mm. I I wasn't someone that very good at uh, math. Mm-hmm. To begin with, oh, but then I study. Here. <laughs> I study all the time, huh? Like after class, I would review the notes, look through everything, and then uh, after the test, as uh, the teacher was like, they're not gonna, he's not gonna curve the the grade. Yeah. Because someone got like a full score, right. and I would just turn to my friend like, who got the full score? Like who got like who would get like a hundred? That's crazy. Mm-hmm. And it was me who got like. Wow, a hundred! Wow, and all of my friend that like I was talking to, like who would get a hundred? They would look at me like they gave me the look of like, oh my god, like it's you, you know. <sighs> and they kind of like thought that I pretend. <laughs> mm, mm-hmm. No, I didn't think I would get, you know. Yeah, yeah. But if you ask about the creativity or anything behind it, I think it was catchy. The word "mong rang" yeah gave me a look like mm-hmm. "mong rang." That's like mm-hmm. people wanted to know like mm-hmm. "mong rang" to my. เกิดอะไรขึ้นมันมีความดราม่าอยู่ในนั้นเนาะใช่ครับ and and then like it's also fit the stereotype of like Asians are being really good at, at <laughs> yeah. math which is not true in my case <laughs> yeah. and, but I, I I saw a lot of comments saying like, mm-hmm. it yeah, encouraged people to like comment as well that's why it went viral right. mm-hmm. so you didn't think that it could like went this viral no uh-huh. I'm 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 very spontaneous as a person. Like yeah. I didn't plan anything mm-hmm. in in this at all. But when it yeah. went viral, I was like, oh, I guess mm-hmm. people liked it. So yeah. I keep making more about my videos. Yeah. Living in the U.S. Here uh-huh. and there. Yeah. เพราะฉะนั้นตอนนี้ใครที่ยังไม่ได้ติดตามนะครับ TikTok ของพี่ต้านะครับ Is it you can tell tell the the audience about your channel? It's a uh, TikTok at Speak with Nita. S P E A K W I T H. N I T A speak with mm-hmm. Nita. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. ไปติดตามกันนะครับขอบคุณค่ะ Okay, let's let's get back to the passion a little because that was gonna have it. It's just around the corner for you because mm-hmm. uh, right now we're at the end of June, and by the end of next month we'll get new Miss, Miss Universe, Universe Thailand. Thailand. Yes. In one month, so everything will happen to you super like super fast. One month yeah. from now, yes. what are you going to be doing? Uh, okay, like I mentioned, k e p t u a So we're going to have that all the camping and getting to know the judges, getting mm. to know the women, mm. and also uh, we have swimming suit competition, yeah, preliminary competition, and then mm-hmm. final competition, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and a lot of like behind the scenes. There are a lot of activities going right. into. Mm-hmm. Uh, Miss Universe Thailand. Mm-hmm. Actually, uh, this year I think we get to play like volleyball by the beach and stuff. Oh, like that okay. As well. So, did you know how to play volleyball? My dad is, uh, my dad. He he's a volleyball player. Wow. He got um, scholarship through like oh, cool. volleyball when he was in like high school, I think, or cool. college. Yeah. Okay. So I guess I don't really play volleyball, but I think uh, I have that DNA within me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So, what is the thing that you're most excited about? Thing that I'm most excited about, I feel like going into MUT would just broaden my perspective in in anywhere, in any way. Just mm. because all the women there are very talented, mm. and I love being like around women who are passionate, mm. and I think that's what I'm excited about. And mm. also the 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 contest as well, or Hong Dam, huh? Hong Dam. Hong Dam. Ah. If I if I made it to top 30 i l l get to go to like Hong yeah. Dam and yeah. stuff. I think that would be uh-huh. that would be really nice because I I know myself because of pageantry. Mm-hmm. I know myself because of this mm-hmm. industry. I loved it, and I want people to yeah really look at it in a positive light. Right. So, have you met all of your like um, friends or competitors? All the ladies. Uh-huh. All the ladies. Yeah. Uh, yes and no because we wouldn't we don't know who's gonna make it to the final I see. top 30 okay. but like uh-huh. yeah I've I've met with some of them and we mm-hmm. are friends on Instagram mm-hmm. kind of know who's gonna compete this year yeah. so the first time that we met for the first gate to the universe it was super fun mm-hmm. because we are like 
oh, I, I, I know you on Instagram. Like we yeah, talked yeah. about this. Uh-huh. And it's really cool. Oh, let, let's talk about some of them. Who made the best impression for you? Do you remember anybody in particular? Oh, anybody I, stands out? Anyone that stands out? I really like uh, Kate. Mm-hmm. She's from Chicago. Yeah. And I was just talking to her, and I think I, I really like her energy. Yeah. Like the way she she talks, the way she articulate herself. I was like, hmm, mm-hmm. she's very interesting, and she she's vegan as well. So I was Ooh. like, it's really fun talking to her uh, about being vegan in Thailand because she just moved from Chicago. Yeah. And I never been to Chicago. I was like, so how about it's like? Mm-hmm. So yeah, and I, I'm I, Peppy. Peppy is really fun. She's from New York. Yeah. So mm-hmm. and. Uh, Anna, I met her f- from like three, four pageants back, and mm-hmm. then we're still friends now. Yeah, but we didn't really get to talk last time because we were super busy. Right. So, well, yeah. it seems to me like a lot more um, contestant or the the beauty queens can speak English like fluently. Yeah. Nowadays. Now. It used to be a very special thing for a certain person in their passion who can speak English fluently. But nowadays, it has become a norm, right? Mm-hmm. Do you, do you think so too? Yes, because in a way, you still need to go compete in an international stage, and you need English to communicate with with everyone. Mm. You know, with even though you didn't make it to you know top five or top ten to answer the questions. Right. You still need English in your everyday life to mm. talk to the staff, to the mm. friends, and mm. everyone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's yeah. I think it's very important. Yeah, it has become something very essential yeah. nowadays, right? Yeah. So okay, um, what would be the goal for you? Whether or not you can uh, finish this passion and become our new MUT and go and become the next mm-hmm. uh, Miss okay. Universe, if the passion life is over. What do you see yourself beyond that? Ah, uh, well, that's a very good question. Mm. <laughs> have you ever thought that, or it's still too far away from I, from your life right now that you haven't thought about it? I I've thought about it because I'm at 26, at the age of 26, and I think pageantry they would only allow women to be like 28 to compete. So, yes, I I always know that. People always have known me as a woman from Thailand, and I know that I always want to represent my country, mm-hmm. and I want to represent a Thai woman, like on in in any possible way. I want you to look at me and know that oh yeah, you know Thai women are, are cool and we are capable, we are self driven, mm-hmm. and even after pageantry, I think I will always, always, do this duty mm-hmm. of mine because mm-hmm. I love Thailand so much, and yeah. I, I I want people to see. Us, uh, mm-hmm. us Thai women and Southeast Asian women in a different light. Mm-hmm. I'm sure uh, people who are watching this show are rooting for you right Thank now, you. us included, me included, Thank and you. I think you can go all the way. Thank you so much. So, uh, at the end of the the show, I w- want you to help us to come up with uh, some good words like "kamidi." That's the uh-huh. name of the show, right? So, I was wondering what would be your Kamidi, in both English and Thai. How about three English words? Mm. That is your favorite words, and three Thai words also that are your favorites. Can you think of any cool words to share? Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, totally. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think for English words, the first one would be empathy. Empathy. Yes. Yeah. Empathy. Why? Why? Why is that? With a lot of things that's going on in in our world right now, I think we might have different political views, we might have different beliefs, but in the end of the day, I think humanity always comes first. And in order for us to break through that barrier, we need to have empathy to truly listen to one another mm-hmm. and try to put yourself in someone else's shoes. Mm-hmm. I think that's what we need. Yeah, yeah. couldn't agree more. Yeah, right. O- what about the next word? <sighs> Self compassion. Mm. Uh, I practice self-compassion a lot more after I join pageantry because it's it's an industry that is people always can critique you mm. and say leave bad comments about you all the time and sometimes you kind of believe those comments when you're on like when you have a bad when you have a bad day and I tend to tell myself that 
uh, with and without those bad comments, I need to find compassion for myself. Mm-hmm. I am valid. I'm enough, and I'm ready to represent mm-hmm. a Thai woman. Wow! Yeah, mm-hmm. I love both words. <laughs> How about the third? Another one for us, please. Uh, I think this one is very important. Is global citizen? Ah, yeah. okay. Why do you like that word so much? I uh, because I grew up in a in a community community that's very diverse. And I think being Thai have helped me gain a lot of like friends and making making sure that my friends get a lot of um, good experience. But at the same time, you can't just uh, allow all of your friends, or you can at the same time you cannot just actually wait for your friends to understand all of the Thai culture or your mm. Thainess. Mm. So you have to be a global citizen. And understand other people's culture as well, and try to meet in the middle. Because there are times that I don't understand my friend's culture, and mm. times that my friends don't understand my culture. I think at the end of the day, uh, we have internet, we have its globalization, <laughs> and that's why I think yeah. it's really good that we try mm. to be more of global citizens. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh, empathy, self-compassion, global citizen. Yes, they are so cool. <laughs> How about Thai words? You must have had like some great Thai words that that you love so much. มีคำนี้ดีภาษาไทยไหมมีค่ะคำคำแรกคือไฟรู้ค่ะ to seek knowledge. Right. I think it's very important for you to ไฟรู้ at all time from mm-hmm. anything from anyone. Mm-hmm. So I, I I truly believe that I could learn and I could exchange my knowledge and learn from. Everyone in this room and mm. everyone from this world. Mm-hmm. If I keep being Fai Lu, Fai Lu, Fai Lu. คำที่ดีมากคำที่สองครับรับฟังรับฟัง Wow. รับฟัง I think. Okay. Why? Why? Why that word? Deep listening. Deep listening. Deep listening. Not just listen, but mm. deep listening. Deep listening. Mm-hmm. Uh, now we have a lot of information, the stream of information, all the times, and sometimes we kind of take that for granted. We don't really listen. Or when we talk to our friends, we listen to just respond back, mm-hmm. and I tend to do that in in pageantry as well. Mm-hmm. Like, I I just listen to something to to respond back. So I have to tell myself that sometimes you don't really need to just you don't need to respond. You know, you can just sit there and be a listener. Mm-hmm. And I think if we, if everyone could be a better listener, the world would be such a better place. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. There's a lot of talkers. Yeah, a lot of aren't talkers. There? Yeah. I mean, yeah, everybody wants to talk, and uh, it's like being being a listener seems very easy to do, but not a lot of people can do it well. No, no, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. like people just listen and respond to talk mm-hmm. back. But I think it's it's really important for you to just hold that unsolicited <laughs> advice mm-hmm. <laughs> to yourself, to yourself, and yeah. be like, okay, yeah, I understand your struggles, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. you know what. Now yeah. let's see what can we do about it. Right. Uh huh. Most of the time, people know what they want to do. <laughs> yeah. ฝ่ายรู้รับฟังขออีกสักคำหนึ่งปิดท้ายวันนี้ครับครอบครัวค่ะ Ah. You seem like you're very close to your family. Yes. Uh huh. And they support you in all every, every way, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. And the reason that I'm saying this not because I not only because I truly love my family, but I also want to encourage everyone who listen to this. Podcast to know that uh, try to make yourself or your family a, a safe space for everyone within the family, mm-hmm. because I think it's very important. The reason that I am who I am today is because my parents always accepted me as who I am, and I want every children to grow up and feel like they are protected in their home. Mm-hmm. Wow! You know what? This is the best. Experience for me because the first time that I get to talk to a beauty queen on the show <laughs> is great. <laughs> so thank yeah, thank you so much for coming and for uh, making this conversation very um, fun and very entertaining. And I learn a lot from you too. And I think, like I said before, you can go all the way, and we are rooting for you. Mm, okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. So, so stop by any time, and I hope this is not our last conversation on the show too. 
Hopefully. ขอบคุณมากๆนะครับขอบคุณค่ะ Do you want to say anything to your fan uh, right now who who's watching this show? Thank you so much. Thank you so 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 much for all the love and support that I've been getting. Like I've mentioned the first time that I joined, not a lot of people actually believe that I could make it that far. But now that because of that experience, I have to validate myself. But now that I have all the love and support, and then when I have a bad day, I can go back and read all of your comments, and it means the world to me and to other beauty queens as well. I'm pretty sure that they would go back and read their fan messages, and it's very heartwarming. And keep this energy and keep spreading love and positivity. <laughs> <laughs>